guys. I um, want to do a quick little video today. I've had several different people asking me how um, or what process I use for um, finishing fur after I catch um, whatever critters that we've caught for that day. And uh, I'll just start this video off by saying I am by no means a fur handling expert. Um, you think, well, Dan, how can you not be a fur handling expert? You've been trapping on and off since you're like 11 years old. And the answer to that is most of my life, I have just sold green fur. Um, a variety of reasons for that. Number one, um, I didn't have time to finish fur. Um, with, with my job and other things, I just didn't have the time. And number two, I didn't always have a place that even do that. So um, I just trapped and froze everything and then I just sold everything green. Plus back in the old days, there's all these local small town fur buyers and you could just drive over there and sell everything green and you didn't have to go very far. Nowadays, it's a little bit more complicated to find people, um, you know, all those, a lot of those small town guys are all gone. So you might have to drive a long ways to find somebody that'll buy your fur and, and stuff like that. I mean, the whole fur market is kind of in flux right now anyway with Napa and everything else that's been going on. So um, that's really the reason that I am not a uh, fur handling expert, just because I haven't done it for 30 years. Um, I'm back into doing it again, started doing it in the last, you know, couple years and um, haven't really fleshed in a, in a long time and haven't really put up fur in a long time. So I'm kind of, they say, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike, you'll never forget, but um, I'm having to kind of work out some of the kinks as I go myself. But I thought I would do a short little video and kind of show you the process that I use and kind of what works for me. So um, let's go check out the first shed. Okay, so obviously the first thing that we do is um, we come in and we go to the skinning machine area and I skin the critters. Now, since most of the time I am trapping um, early, early in the morning before work, uh, my normal MO is whatever I catch that day, um, I will skin it when I get home. So I'll do a couple of different things. I'll either hang them outside. I have a big tree that I can hang stuff out of, or if I only catch like one thing or whatever, I'll just go ahead and hang it here in the, on the skinning machine. But if I got, you know, a couple coons or three coyotes or whatever I got, um, I'll just hang those outside in a tree. And then when I get home at the end of the day, I'll bring them in here and skin them. So what do I do with that? Well, that depends. Sometimes if I'm, um, if I have time and it's just like maybe one or two animals, um, then I will move right over directly. Uh, well, let me back that up. Um, generally I seldom if ever go directly from the skinny machine to the fleshing board. And the reason for that is I like to wash all my fur. So generally what I'll do is, I mean, if I'm just pressed for time, sometimes I will go over and flush them. And then, um, but generally what I'll do is I'll skin them and then I'll either freeze them or I'll take them right to the washing machine, which is right over here. And into the washing machine they go on the rinse cycle, rinse and spin. That takes about 18, 19 minutes. Um, puts them through a big rinse and a big high power spin. Generally that gets the fur mostly dry actually, believe it or not. It does a pretty good job of spinning it out, but there's still a little bit of wetness to it. So generally what I will do is I'll skin the animals, I'll wash them, and then when I wash them, I will hang them up over here I have a drain here in the middle and I'll usually just take my ladder that's sitting right there and I'll bring them over here and I'll throw two or three or whatever animals I got one and I'll just throw them on top of uh, off of one of the um, foot pegs of the uh, the ladder and I'll let them just drain into uh, my drain here I'll basically just dry um, overnight usually and then what happens is the next day I will end up fleshing. 
So I'm usually at least one day behind. Um, if they sit overnight and they've dried out, um, if it's a coon, I will always take that coon and stick it right there in the refrigerator because I absolutely hate fleshing coons. That fat is just, if it's warm, it is just nasty. And it's just so liquefied kind of fat. So I throw them in the, once they're a little bit dry, they've hung overnight, they've dried out, I've washed the fur, um, into the refrigerator they go, and then when I get home after work and start skinning and fleshing um, for that night, then I just throw them on the fleshing beam right over here, and I'll start fleshing. Um, what I do, I don't know what everybody else does. I have this little itty bitty little metal trash can that I just keep underneath my fleshing beam and then all of the fat and meat and gunk just goes in there. Um, I have a piece of plywood that is just down there to keep stuff from just getting all over the floor. Otherwise that stuff, that fat and nastiness gets slick and I just don't want it to be all over my carpet or my carpet, my concrete. And um, so I just catch everything um, in the little metal trash can. What I'd miss will just fall on the uh, um, piece of plywood and uh, into the can it goes. And then I just empty the can every few days down in the woods and um, just keep continuing with that process. So basically I am always at least a day behind by the time I skin, then by the time I wash, then by the time it dries, and then I'm you know a, a day behind all the time when it comes to fleshing and then uh, once I flesh I throw everything up here and let it hang um, on boards and then once it's once it's dry on this board over here currently right now is where I'm just hanging everything to dry and then once it's dry then I throw it over here on one of these other areas where I've got stuff hanging and and then I just keep going until I fill it up and usually I fill up that whole board I'll fill up this whole board and inevitably I'll end up filling up most of this board and then I'll end up with just a few pegs right out here at the end where um, I've got some animals that are drying now what inevitably happens is I get behind. So um, when I get behind and it looks like I'm going to be behind, uh, once that animal is sitting on the, on the ladder and it's dried overnight um, from being in a washing machine, I'll roll it up and take it over here and put it in the freezer. And if I run out of space in this freezer, then it goes in that freezer and I'll just open up this freezer for a second you can see I got I don't know 15 16 coyotes in there and then another probably six or eight or something in there and then whatever is up there that's already done um, so I'm always behind and I'm, part of that is I'm not super super fast somewhat fast but just I don't worry about being super fast. I try just to take my time and, and do a good job. But, but that's really not the big reason. The really big reason is I just run out of time. Between skinning and um, working all day, then I'll have days where I've worked long days and I won't get home. And then maybe, you know, you're out here until 10, 11, 12 o'clock. Well, then I'm getting up at 4.45 or 4.30 to go run traps. And, um... Inevitably what happens is I'll just say screw it. I'm going to bed. It's 1030. I'm tired and Into the freezer the critters will go so but at least once they're in the freezer They're they are nice and clean from the washing machine So all I got to do is bring them out thaw them out and then once they thaw out onto the fleshing beam they go and that actually makes the process I think better in the fact that um, that fat is kind of hardened. So once that fat is hardened and cold, whether it's thawing out after being in a freezer or um, coming out of the refrigerator 
to me it's just a lot easier to skin those animals or to flesh those animals so that's kind of the process skin wash in the washing machine dry either flush the next night or into the freezer they go and then if they go in the freezer then at some point when i find time they thaw out i flush them and then all of them eventually end up on a board and then i move them from these from one board to the next once they get dried and whatever now how do i hang the have the boards up those are just two by fours that i just put into the ceiling and um, put big screws into basically where the trusses are and then i just have these little hooks that you can buy the, I, I bought them at lowe's i think and that's what i hang everything on whether it's dry fur or whether it's um just the uh the boards now the the boards that i use for the coyotes and and the cats because they're the same boards um are those adjustable boards and how i hang them is i just put a little um oh a little uh zip tie in the top and then i just use the zip tie to hang them off with and then of course i did the same thing on the coon boards i just added little zip ties on the back of them up here drilled a little hole in them put a little zip tie up there and that's what i hang all the boards on honestly i think hanging these boards is kind of a pain in the ass um and i've tried several different systems over the years and this is probably the best system that i've found is just to put a little staple in it put a zip tie in there and uh, just use the zip tie to hang over the the little uh pegs or the little whatever you call them you guys know what i'm talking about and um, that's the best system that i have found and then what also works is those same pegs once they come off of the board then you just hang your dry fur up there as you can see i got those coyotes i got three gray fox a couple cats i got a couple more cats in the freezer too and then i had that one red up there but i don't harvest reds around here so that's actually a roadkill i actually was on my way to work and someone ran over it as i got up by the city and uh so I, I grabbed it. It was obviously a fresh roadkill. Wasn't too damaged, so I went ahead and um, skinned it and fleshed it, and it'll make a good wall hanger. And then um, I don't catch a ton of coons. I probably got about 10 coons hanging over there. Got a skunk. I do catch a bunch of possums. I have a pile of possums in the freezer right now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. But... Um, I probably only catch maybe 15 or maybe 20 at the most coons a year just because I'm not trying to trap them. Unless some farmer asks me specifically to target them, I don't target them. And they're just incidentals to me. But they are nest eaters, so they need to go at some point. So unless I catch a small one, they're going. Um, so that's how I end up with maybe 15 or so a year, whatever I end up with. Um, so that's kind of how I process fur. Um, kind of just my system. I'm sure other people have a better system or a different system. Um, that's just how I do it. So skinning, washing, hanging and drying, or freezer, then flushing, then on a board, and then once they're off a board, then they just hang. And then at the end of the season, I will ship this wherever I'm going to ship it or sell it to whoever I'm going to sell it to. And then some of it I will hold back and um and send it off to get some tan stuff done um, i do sell a few little pieces that way every year and then you know wall hangers or whatever so all right hope that helps that's kind of how i do the whole fur thing um feel free to leave in the comment section if there's something i should be doing that's better than this but this is just kind of how i have um done it over the years and uh if I haven't said this in the video earlier, I'm a big proponent of washing this fur. I mean, you can just see these are, I mean, these coyotes, I mean, they're Ozarks coyotes. They're not the absolute best coyotes, but you can just see how clean this fur is from being washed. I mean, it comes out really, really nice. No blood, no mud, no nothing on it. Um, you brush it out and boy, it comes out really nice. So. 
Um, big proponent of washing fur. If you don't already do that, I would add that. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.